Hello and welcome back. Today uh, I have another uh, multimeter with oscilloscope function, and this time it's from uh, a desktop or ABSTOP. I'm not exactly how to pronounce it, but it is a nice multimeter with a normal dial, and it also has an oscilloscope function up to I think 12 megahertz even. Also has a signal generator, has about 6,000 counts. Nice looking box. Oscilloscope, multimeter, and even function generator. So it's a three in one. They call it an oscilloscope multimeter. But when we look at it, it is more like a, I think, like a multimeter with an oscilloscope function because of this round dial. So if you are a classical user, you will probably appreciate the dial. What is in the box? Kijk, uh, I like this. Nicely protected. So. Once you throw the box, it is still nicely. And what we have, manual. Yeah, yeah maybe in Europe they sent German in English. So that's nice. Big manual, but also a short one. It tells you quickly what all the buttons do. This is uh, usually enough. I think it has rechargeable built in. You cannot replace batteries it has a usb only to charge and it comes with usb it comes with clips and with probes decent oh the multimeter itself nice dark display Ooh, it lights up powers up big digits let me switch this off now it's all red all kind of purple, greenish, red, purple. It cycles with different colors. It powers on quite quickly. I think you can switch on and off the beep because I think there is a little beep. Uh, there is also an LED here on the top. Uh, when it charges, it is uh, red. And when it's full, it is green. But we see here also the three indicator. It is already full. It boots pretty fast. And it has a beep. But you can switch off the beep. And there is an auto uh, shutdown. You can also switch it off. I think if you hold the button and you switch it on. It says here that everything is now off. If we do it with four. It is now silent and there is no power off. So we have the fault setting and we can change that with the select button to AC and to Hertz and even to Geordi cycle. The millivolt setting, same. Only no duty cycle there and frequency, it is just AC or DC. Then we have here resistor mode, diet mode, it says in the top. It is continuity and back to resistance mode. It can do capacitors, it can do well, frequency. In duty cycle, but we saw that also in the AC setting. We have microamps. Okay, that could be interesting. DC microamps, AC microamps. Okay, we can play with that. That is nice. Milliamps, and it even has 10 amps. Now we get to the generator. This is the backlight. Seems to have two levels or three if you count off. I think long push will bring us into the generator. And long push auto, I think, brings us to the oscilloscope. And there is a save button uh, that will just capture the screen. And it stores it in the machine itself. You cannot read it with the USB, so you need to cycle through it. But that is probably more useful in the oscilloscope. 
and when you push the save button now it already has uh, stored it so this is now frozen and then you need to see how to store it I think with a long push and then you need to select the position where you want to store it it's uh, yeah record one record two record three and then you push save again and then it was stored in that let's do some accuracy testing I have the LBO2A, I like it to use it, it's quick and maybe I can do some lower values with the advantage so and of course I have the DMM check plus for the true RMS and for the 1% resistors and we have some caps there ok let's go up the switching takes a little while but it does sort of 2-3 samples a second and it needs some time three volts four nothing wrong with that oh that takes a while we can quickly do resistance um, yeah 20 ohms yes the thousand is usually spot on is that here also yep current we can do milliamps milliamps here yeah perfect yeah no problems quickly the voltages with the DMM check plus uh, again I made a mistake not to heat it first but we do not have too many digits so it will be fine I should have now 5 volts and in AC let's try that look at that this is true RMS that is ok can we see the frequency also I think that was possible 100 Hz and I also have 10k here it is 10k duty cycle should be like 50% then maybe the frequency is a bit high so I will go back to 100 Hz yeah maybe if we do the setting specially for that this one does it maybe then detect correct here it is back to 100k yeah that's better it just works better in the frequency setting here let's do some gaps one nano no problem 10 nano perfect 100 no problem this sometimes takes a little bit yep there it is was actually quite fast quickly resistance one good uh, yeah 100k spot on 10k 10k 1k and 100 ohms yep and I have DC current also so let me go to this and then it doesn't give you any warning I think it was 1 milliamp but very accurate yeah can I go lower yeah look at that that is indeed one let's see if we can do the same for AC yeah close enough I want to test the oscilloscope function but uh, it doesn't have any BNC's so we need to test it through the normal terminals or I just need to put one of these 
and it does fit. So it's, it's not the problem that they didn't provide one. So we can use that. So I decided not to use this because they didn't provide one. So I will do the oscilloscope testing with the normal, except for that I of course need this converter on my generator here. And then let's see what it will do. The oscilloscope will work with two settings on the volt setting and the millivolt setting. And maybe they did this because there is no B and C, so there is no 1x or 10x setting. I will do 1 megahertz with a peak peak of 4. Okay, so we set it to voltage mode. Then long mode to get it into oscilloscope mode. Then I will put my signal on the output. It says auto. Yes, it detects. Uh, here is voltage. Here is time. My trigger. Here is time. And then I can zoom in. Do I see a frequency? Okay, that works quite nice. So here you can switch from time to voltage to trigger. Uh, so if I do voltage, then my arrows become here. Okay, exit, and then of course the time base, and then, okay, this is the maximum we can do here. Okay, so this is on one megahertz, and already we cannot zoom more. So, well, let me just get higher, just to see if it can do higher frequencies. Two megahertz, three, four, five, six. We are now on five megahertz and not much zooming, so, and it was supposed to do 12, but maybe they did the measurement on the 3dB, it is indeed not slowing down. Now we are on 10 megahertz, 11, 12, and yeah, I know it doesn't make sense anymore. So up to 12, uh, yes, but if we have no more time base, it is kind of useless. Okay, the time base is stuck. If we are on one megahertz, we can see two sine waves and we cannot zoom in anymore. So if we go to 12 megahertz, and that was within indeed uh, minus 3 dB, but then I, I have like 20 waves on the screen, so it, it, it doesn't give me anything. So this is one megahertz. And two, three, four. Uh, it's already at four megahertz. It is uh, useless with this time base. So I would say yes, one megahertz. It is nice for one megahertz, this uh, oscilloscope. Let's try the generator. Here we go. So what we have, we check the wave here. Then we can select squares, a ramp. And sign and when we do sign we can do different frequencies from uh, 100 hertz all the way up to 100k for the wave for the squares 50k from 100 hertz and for the ramp Also 50k to 100 hertz, and we can even set a duty cycle from 10% all the way to 90. For the generator, we use these connections from the milliamps and the common, and we connect this to the scope, of course, again with my adapter. Set the sine wave 10k, 50%, threefold peak peak. And the output is on, and you can switch it on off with the auto button. This is what it is on the scope, indeed. 10k, 3 volt peak peak, no problems there, it looks good. I will change the wave to squares. 
not bad at all. And let's do a ramp. The ramp is a bit rough. So the sample is not that high probably. Maybe if I change the frequency a little bit. If I go a little bit higher. 20. 50. Yeah, then it becomes smoother. So in the lower frequency, the ramp is a little bit rough. 200 Hz. We can see it is really building up the ramp. So now I was thinking, um, what if we leave it switched on? We try to switch to scope mode and see if the generator keeps running. So this is my scope. Well, the common is the common, so we just leave it as it is. Put this one in the generator. So the generator output is now connected here to the generator output, connected here to the scope input. We leave it running. We go to scope mode. And indeed, it's there. And if I go back to generator, and I set it to square, and we go back to the scope mode. That is pretty cool. That is usually not possible with these uh, simple scope meters. But now it is. That is actually pretty amazing. The only thing I notice is that the time base you cannot change while the oscillator is running. So it sort of is what it is. The voltage you can change. But the time base, ah, also now, now it works. And we see the same roughness, but it works. So what can I say about this uh, multimeter oscilloscope? They say themselves it's an oscilloscope multimeter. I would think, no, it's more a multimeter with an oscilloscope function because of the round dial. And I think they are targeting the people that like the classic multimeter design um, because the other scope multimeters like the Soji is around the same price. And uh, Fenerci still need to test that one. They don't have that dial, so it's all with buttons. So some people like more the rotator, then this could be something. Well, the multimeter was quite accurate, but it's only 6,000 count, so it's good but it's not necessarily very spectacular. The built-in generator is actually quite nice. You can set uh, three types of waves, a sine wave, a square, and a ramp. And um, you can set a few frequencies. It is good enough for simple tests, but it is for simple uh, things. But it runs while the scope is also running. The oscilloscope, that is a little bit another story, and that's why I call it a multimeter with oscilloscope function, because they said it does 12 megahertz. Well, we saw the minus 3 dB point could be around 12 megahertz indeed. Um, but the time base, you cannot zoom in enough. You cannot make the time small enough that you can actually see something. So if you want to see a full wave, a full cycle of a sine wave, then it is about one mega edge. And so maybe two, three mega edge, yes, 12, I think not. But as a multimeter, it seems very strong. There's all this rubbery. It is a lot less uh, fragile than some of the other uh, multimeters with oscilloscope function. It has the classical dial, if you like that. There's all kinds of fancy colors. That is nice. But uh, they are taking a risk because in this price range, it's around uh, 70 euros, 70 dollars. Um, there is a lot more to get from other brands also, but they are quite unique with the standard dial. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you next time.